Are you ready for week two? I am, and you're going to be after you watch this show because Michael Bolton has every bit of information that you need. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy, your daily NBA fantasy podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I'm going to do the rest of this episode in my Truman Capote voice. Which is really bad, but I'm also the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com and you can find me on Twitter as always at RedRock underscore B-Ball on TikTok at RedRock underscore B-Ball and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Today's episode is brought to you by Fangio. Start the season with a big return on Fangio. New customers can place a $5 bet and get started with $150 in bonus bets if you win your first $5 bet. Go to Fangio.com right now to get started. Thank you also for making Locked On Fantasy Basketball your first listen every day. We're free and we're available on all platforms, so double bang and thumb and comment and all that stuff. It's all great. It's all good. Week two is getting ready to start. We've still got a couple of days left of week one, depending on when you're listening to this. So congratulations, commiserations, good luck Saturday, Sunday. I don't know, because I don't know when you're watching it. We're going to talk about what we're looking at in week two, the way the schedule plays out, the way we can minimize, max not minimize, we want to do that. We want to maximize our production. Remember, we are still in the feeling out stage of the season. So it's not about aggressive streaming all the time. We do try and get our victories where we can. We try and make smart moves. We see what positions we have opening in terms of injuries and does that open a streaming spot? But priority should always be, I think at this point, where can I get a season-long play? Where is a season-long value versus, man, I really need to see what Nameish Kader can get me on today's game. Right, so be aware of that. When we're talking schedule and planning out streaming, we we should be looking more at the season-long stuff versus looking at, you know, how do I get the short-term benefit onto my team? That is how I approach it. Now, you can obviously approach it any way that you want. It does not have to be the same same way as that at all, but that is how I um, go through that. So let's start off by taking a look at the way the schedule actually just plays out across week two in the NBA. And it is obviously our first full week of the year. We have got... Um, relatively busy days across the NBA on uh, if a week two. We start with Monday with 11 games, Tuesday with four, Wednesday with 11, Thursday with four. Nice symmetry. And then we have the relatively standard solid Friday-Saturday combo, nine games on Friday, 10 games on Saturday, and then a very, very, very weak Sunday with three games on. How does that all break down? Well, this is how it breaks down. We're talking about week two here, of course, which is October the 28th through to November the 3rd. The majority of teams are playing four games for the week. Atlanta, Brooklyn, Boston, Cleveland, Dallas, Denver, Detroit, Memphis, New Orleans, Orlando, Portland, Sacramento, San Antonio, Toronto, and Utah. And as always, I do my best in producing all of these shows literally by myself Um, And sometimes there will be an error or a team miss. So I am providing this information. If I was you and you've got a query, you can always double check my work, double check anyone's work, just just in case. Just just in case. You want to always make certain of things, right? Because I am an unbelievably great human, but I'm still human. If you could see me winking, you'd see it. Um, But just make sure you're double checking. Because last week I missed the two-game team, and I apologize for that. So, they're your four-game teams. Three-game teams. Charlotte, Chicago, Golden State, Houston, Indiana, the Clippers, the Lakers, Miami, Milwaukee, Minnesota, New York, Oklahoma City, Phoenix, and Washington. And there is one team with a two-game week, which is good and bad. It's good if you have... What's Philadelphia? It's good if you have Joel Embiid and Paul George, because if they do miss this week, it's only two games. It's bad if you're counting on the production of Andre Drummond, Kelly Oubre, Caleb Martin... Kyle Lowry and go, well, they're going to get a boost while Embiid and Paul George aren't there because you only get two games out of them. So it's not really that exciting of a boost at all. So that's that becomes, uh, I guess, irritating in that respect. Let's take a look at where the quality games look because we know what a quality game is. I'm not explaining it. Figure this one out. I will every couple of shows, but I'm not going to do it now. We did it last week. I'm sure most of you know what it is by now. There are four days which qualify to me 
in a standard format, 10 starters, three bench, 10 starters, four bench, as a quality game. This is all important. for. It has no importance in weekly leagues at all. It has importance in daily changes leagues. We've got four days. Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and Sunday are quality game days. And there are three teams that play three quality games. Brooklyn, Dallas, and New Orleans. So when we're talking about streaming options, these are the teams that really make most sense. And it's good because there are options here. There's Dennis Schroeder and Ben Simmons who are available in Brooklyn. Dorian Finney-Smith is available in Dallas. Well, there's fewer options in Dallas, but you can talk about, you're making sure that Gafford and Lively are already rostered, same as PJ Washington, but maybe you squeeze something out of Jaden Hardy or Najee Marshall. And the other one is New Orleans. So if you were considering a drop of Herb Jones in a category league, you don't, but this gives you that boost. If you're looking at, wait, can I get something out of Jordan Hawkins? Well, here you go. What do I get out of Eve Missy? What do I get in deeper leagues out of Javante Green? Three quality games. That is more than... 27 other teams. That's a W. In terms of who's got two quality games, there's not as many as you think. Atlanta, Denver, Detroit, Orlando, Sacramento, Utah, and Minnesota have two games on any of those four days. And there are three teams with a very bad schedule. Philadelphia obviously only has two games, and they are both high-volume days. Miami has zero quality games, and Washington has zero quality games. So if you had a Bub Carrington, and you're going to, I'll see what we get. I'll try Corey Kiss, but you're probably not going to even use them. If you've got a Jaime Huckers, if you've for some reason holding on to a Khalil Ware, if you're trying a little Chungus Nikolajovic, and you're worried about getting games in for this week, you're not going to play them. If you've got Kyle Lowry, Cali Oubre, Andre Drummond, you probably would start on the two game days, but we also don't know the status of Embiid and Paul George. Like the value of these Sixers guys, you don't even get to really stream them in on low volume days with zero quality games on a two-game week. It is almost one of your worst-case scenarios in terms of playing out a schedule for a team. It it really doesn't get much worse than that, to be honest. Let's start looking at streaming again with the gigantic caveat in that you don't have to stream at this point of the year. But if you do, here's the way to do it. And the way that the games play out, the way that the schedule plays out, there's really only one way to do this. Assuming that quality game and, and always look, on a high-volume day, an 11-game Wednesday, a 10-game Saturday, do you have an open roster spot on your active? Do you have, can you fill it up? Or would you add someone and, and still have that open position? Because if you do, that changes the entirety of the schedule. And that's why we go through every back-to-back and every little permutation of things that we can do. And I can't hold everyone's hand for every roster decision, but I'll give you the framework to do it. But if we're using the quality game rubric, is that the right word? I hate that word, but it also gets used a lot. Two words that I feel like never got used in the past. Ready? Sidebar? Sidebar. I need a sidebar graphic or something. Two words I feel like never got used in the past but get used all the time now. Rubric and cohort. W words. They get used a lot though. There's another one. What's the other one? Um, There's another word that gets used a lot that I'm always, never um, sure what it means. Not Schadenfreude because I know what that is. What's the other one? Serendipity. That's another word. That gets you, that's been used all the time. It's always one word. Like, oh, it sounds good. Not really sure I've ever had to work it into a conversation, but cohort rubric, there we go. So if we're using the quality game rubric here in this one, how do we maximize our games played for streaming? We're under the assumption we've got four waiver ads for the week, and we've got one spot that's probably a streaming spot. So how would we do it? Well, on Tuesday to Thursday, understanding there's 11 game Wednesday in the middle, and we've got the four game Tuesday, four game Thursday. You can see there are two teams here. It's Utah and Dallas that we can take a look at. So we try and find a Utah or a Dallas player that is available off the waiver wire that we can try out and see whether that, you know, see whether it works. Because again, they might not be the sexiest players for you, but getting two games with one waiver ad, using that those waiver ads that you save to grab someone who does an idiotic drop or to grab a hot free agent that's popping off, that's where you benefit. So Jordan Clarkson, yeah. The man on the street, the Filipino legend, J-O-R-D-A-N-C-L-A-R-K-S-O-N, He's going to be up and down. But you get two games on low volume days, so it's a W. And then we get into like questionable territory. Najee Marshall, Jaden Hardy, who is getting those 19, 20 minutes a night. Quentin Grimes, who was the first guard off the bench. He might give you combined two points in two games. That is possible. And the other one's Cody Williams, who also, that'd be a battle actually. Who scores more real life points on the Tuesday, Thursday combination, Quentin Grimes or Cody Williams? Fangio, you got an odds for that? Maybe, probably not. 
But that's um, the way you can attack that Tuesday, Thursday combination. And then the next back-to-back or way to stream with one wave, and there is no Thursday, Friday back-to-back, so you can't even use that as a combination. The next one is Friday, Sunday. And we look at, there's more teams in this situation. We look at um, Brooklyn, and we look at Orlando, and we look at New Orleans, who we can attack in that um, that period of the week in terms of getting those those games on those days. So there's And there's more exciting options that are available there. The other one we can look at in that area is Atlanta too, but I would say the majority of the of the players that are useful, um, and there are teams that have this this Friday Sunday as well. We've got um, Detroit in that area. We've got uh, said Orlando in that area too. But you're streaming in uh, Ben Simmons, Dennis Schroeder, Wendell Carter Jr., Eve Misi, Dorian Finney-Smith. Real nice boost with two games on those low volume days, and that has given you use two ads. And you've gotten four games out of it. You've saved two ads to make on other decisions and injury replacements and individual day streaming and weird pickups or whatever. That's how we. That's how I think we want to use that at this point in the season. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook. Get ready to tackle all of the NFL action with FanDuel America's number one sportsbook because right now, new customers can go and bet $5 and get $150 in bonus bets if you win. The FanDuel Sportsbook app gives you everything that you need to place live bets on the NFL all in one place. So in that middle of the game, you get a hunch, you can check out the live stats, you can check out the live play-by-play, and it's so much more. All on that one place, or that one page where you would place your bets. So go to FanDuel.com to join today. You get started with $150 in bonus bets if you win your first $5 bet. That is FanDuel.com. Never waste a hunch and make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sportsbook partner of the NFL, and don't forget to gamble responsibly. Okay, so we've gone through all of that. We've looked at the streaming situation. We've looked at the quality games. We've looked at how the schedule um, plays out in terms of the number of games. But now it's time to dig a little bit deeper into that schedule and take a look at some of the quirks that might exist across week two in the NBA. And we'll start by looking at teams that don't play on the weekend. This is important when we're assessing waiver moves during the week and there's a hot guy that pops up and you go, oh, I might add him. Then you go, oh, he actually doesn't play the final two days of the week, and that's honestly when you start scrambling, oh, what's my matchup look like, how do I do this? And if there's someone that's sitting there without any games, well, that leads to some trouble. So there are four teams that don't play on the weekend. Chicago, Indiana, the Lakers, and the Knicks. Do not play across the weekend. In terms of teams that have a slow start to the week, there are five te- four teams sorry, that do not play until Wednesday. So they don't play the 11-game Monday, they don't play the four-game Tuesday, but they play the 11-game Wednesday. So when you've got fringe players from Charlotte, the Clippers, the Thunder... And the Sixers, they don't play for two days to start the week. We know know the Sixers have got a two-game week. We know the Clippers and the Thunder have the weekend back-to-back in week one. But Charlotte, real big gap here. So, look, I do think that holding a Trey man is worth it. But understanding you're getting zero on Monday, Tuesday. So, you know, I think man will be good as long as Miller is out especially. But be aware of that. If you're holding on to a Kevin Porter, I don't really think that's a great decision outside of this weekend back-to-back. Maybe. If you try to Derek Jones, like I don't think that that two game or that two day gap is particularly strong in terms of having holding value there. Now we dig into more of the the quirks across the schedule. We look at who's got the three games in four nights, and we just break this down across the different periods of the week, Monday through to Thursday. Four teams have got three games in four nights. So this again is more just like how do I get sort of chunky? How do I get guys in in this short period of time to give me boosts? Dallas, Memphis, San Antonio, Utah, three games in four nights, Monday to Thursday. If we do Tuesday to Friday, there are two teams. And we've talked about these guys already, Brooklyn and New Orleans, because they've got that nice Friday-Sunday combination as well, plus three games in four nights, Tuesday to Friday. So it's a really beneficial week after Monday for for Brooklyn and New Orleans. There is a million teams that play three games in four nights between Wednesday and Saturday. Boston, Charlotte, Cleveland, the Clippers, Memphis, Oklahoma City, Portland, San Antonio, and Toronto play three games in four nights between Wednesday and Saturday, and there is no team that ends the week with three games in four nights. In week one, it was the Thunder. In this week, it is not no one. You cannot find a team going three games in four between Thursday and Sunday, but you've got that big run of games there. Remembering, though, Wednesday is 11 games, 
Saturday is 10 games, so that might not work for you. It might, though. I don't know because I don't know your roster. If we just expand our horizons a little bit here and we take it into six-day chunks. So who has the four-game in six-night run of things? And we'll start from Sunday of week one and we'll move through to Friday of week two. And there are five teams there. Atlanta, Brooklyn, Indiana, New Orleans, and Portland have four games in six nights. Monday through Saturday, a lot of teams. Boston, Cleveland, Denver, Memphis, Portland, Sacramento, San Antonio, Toronto, Utah. So the way you can also deduce that is that those teams that I just mentioned, Boston, Cleveland, Denver, Memphis, Portland, Sacramento, San Antonio, Toronto, and Utah, those teams are four-game teams that then have Sunday off. So don't play on the three-game Sunday. So if you're streaming those guys in for the four-game week, you can drop them and add someone on Sunday. And then there are two teams, the two teams we talked about already, that have the four games in six nights starting Tuesday. Brooklyn, New Orleans, they've got that three game in four night in the middle, they've got the Friday-Sunday combination, and they've got four games in six nights beginning on Tuesday. Brooklyn and the New Orleans Pelicans both have that combination. There is one team with a really packed schedule. And if we start Sunday of week one, tomorrow, and go through to Saturday of week two, The Portland Trailblazers have five games, two sets of back-to-backs. So if you were considering a Donovan Klingon ad, this might be it. I don't think that it's got long-term appeal, at least not until like February or something. But five games, seven nights, it's a big advantage. Nobody else does this. If you're looking at Tumani Kamara, if you're worried about Denny Avdia or Scoot Henderson, like they've got a really busy period of the schedule here. I'm not sure you want to care too much about Chris Murray or somebody like that. But this is a very busy period, which does enable you to get some um, to get some real value in. Let's take a look at where the back-to-backs lie. And we will start from Sunday of week one, heading into Monday, because sometimes if you've got week one wrapped up in, in, in your league or you're making a move to win week one, if you just grab the guy who might play Monday, if you've got space, that just saves you extra game for Monday without wasting an ad in week two. There are five games Sunday, 11 games Monday, and four teams back-to-back heading into week two. Atlanta, Indiana, Milwaukee, and Portland. It's also worth noting with these back-to-backs, what do we need to be cautious of? Who might sit? For Atlanta, Bogdan Bogdanovich is dealing with a hamstring issue. So even if he's back, he might sit one of these games. I think Indiana will be okay on back-to-backs. Milwaukee, I don't think we're going to worry about Giannis or Dame at this period, but probably not Brook Lopez either, so I think we're okay. And I think Portland will be fine. So I think we might be good there. Monday through to Tuesday, that's 11 games into four games. There are four teams that have the back-to-back. Dallas, Denver, Sacramento, Utah. No one there really bothers me from a week uh, from a back-to-back sitting perspective either. Maybe Jamal Murray for the Nuggets? Maybe. And then we would be interested in what Russ does on Tuesday. If we go to the Tuesday-Wednesday back-to-back, that is four games Tuesday, 11 games Wednesday, there are three teams who have it. Brooklyn, Golden State, and New Orleans. Now, Brooklyn. I have no idea what the plan is for Ben Simmons, but I would suggest he's a big risk of sitting one of those games. I would also suggest, given the minutes limit they're placing on Nick Claxton, that he might sit one of these games. So there could be real opportunities opening for Jalen Wilson, for Zaire Williams, for Nick Claxton. Maybe more more for Dorian Finney-Smith. There is a lot that could open up there. I don't think Golden State is going to be sitting players, although Steph and Draymond both appeared as questionable for game two. So there is, there is a chance, and given their huge depth, wouldn't be shocked to see one of those guys sit, and or especially and even De'Anthony Melton, and seeing things concentrate in one of those games for Golden State, or they sit two guys in one and two guys in another. Absolutely possible. We watch that one intently. And then the Pelicans have Tuesday, Wednesday. There is, I guess, a risk of Zion Williamson sitting one of those games. He doesn't actually have an injury at the moment. He was ill on game one. I, I think we'll be okay, but we watch it. Wednesday, Thursday, back-to-back, there are three teams. Clippers, Memphis, and San Antonio. Kawhi's not playing, so we're fine there. Memphis, they are unbelievably limiting the minutes of Ja Morant, and now he is questionable for today's game. And then Jaron Jackson has also had a hamstring injury. So, yeah, we have to watch that one. And then in San Antonio, I guess it's Chris Paul that you pay a little bit of attention to. Will he play the back-to-back? I don't think there's any risk there with Victor Wembanyama, But, of course, we always need to be on the lookout for it. So we, we will be on the lookout for it. Simple as that. Then we take a look at the last grouping of back-to-backs on Thursday to Friday. Like I said, this was a potential streaming spot because both are quality game days. No back-to-backs Thursday, Friday. 
Friday, Saturday, a lot. But that's nine games into 10. That is Boston, Charlotte, Cleveland, Denver, Minnesota, Oklahoma City, Portland, Sacramento, and Toronto. And then to end the week, Saturday, Sunday, no back-to-backs there as well. So very light on back-to-backs through the back end of the week, apart from everyone doing the back-to-back Friday and Saturday. And there are teams to watch there. That is Boston's first back-to-back, so you want to watch Al Horford. Charlotte, if Brandon Miller comes back, if Mark Williams is back, does LaMelo ball sit? That's all possible. Cleveland, Darius Garland, Don Mitchell, they've had some some knee problems in the past. Denver, I think we're fine. Minnesota, I think we're fine. OKC, I think we're fine. Portland, I said we're fine already. Sacramento's okay. Toronto is going to be the one because, like, what do they do with Barrett? What do they do with Quickly if they're even back and ready to go? Um, That's the question mark. So there are potentials in that one as well for some um, shenaniganizing to go on. Today's episode is also brought to you by the Game Time app. Game Time has a new feature called Game Time Picks. What it does is it helps make getting tickets, your tickets to your event, easier. It cuts out all of the fluff. So for you to see your favorite team, you don't have to sift through so many different options. It just shows you here are the best options, the best prices and the best tickets available to see these events. So that's just one of the many features that Game Time has. They're always innovating. They're always chucking something new in there. And Game Time Picks is that newest thing. They've also got the... um. Um, the all-in pricing, which you can toggle on in the app so that when you are in there, you don't get surprised with additional fees. It just shows you the full price on the ticket. So you know what you're paying straight up. They've got the game time ticket coverage. So your purchase is covered with the most flexible customer service policy in the ticketing industry and the lowest price guarantee where game time will credit you 110% of the difference of the price. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time picks. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code LOCKEDONNBA for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem the code L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-N-B-A for $20 off. Download Game Time today. What time is it? Game Time. Okay, so we've gone through all the back-to-backs. We've gone through the schedule quirks. Now, what it's time for us to look at is where we sit with, um, with injuries. And yeah, who's injured at the moment and how we're going to uh, approach that and yeah, how we need to be on top of this, I guess. So the guys that we are very confident are going to be out for this week. And I've just put the names that are really relevant for majority of leagues, right? for, for the 10s and 12s. Kawhi Leonard's out. Trey Murphy, well, actually, they have, yeah, Kawhi, Kawhi Leonard's out. Trey Murphy is out. DeJounte Murray is out. Kustas Porzingis is out. Um, Isaiah Hartenstein is out, and Devin Vassell is allegedly getting reevaluated on the first, which is Friday. So I'm just going to say that he is out for the week. I doubt he'd be reevaluated, and they say, "Yep, you're ready to go next game." It's possible, but I'm going to say at this point that Devin Vassell is out for the week. Now we've got a bunch of guys where there's some uncertainty regarding where they are in the week, and two of them are the Philadelphia Sixers, 76ers players, Paul George and Joel Embiid. I think there is a chance we get George back for one of these games, and I think there is a chance we get him beat back for these games. It might be both of them, but I don't know. But we just we're just not sure where we're going to be at with Paul George or Joel Embiid. There is also a possibility that Chris Middleton is able to return this week. Robert Williams in Portland, maybe he returns, and that throws an extra spanner into the works of the Klingon and Aiton combination. Brandon Miller. He's going to be out for the start of the week, but he probably is able to return at the back end, but I don't know. We've also got zero updates on Asar Thompson, so I'll say there's a chance that he returns. I wouldn't bank on it, but there is a chance that he is ready to go. There are three names in Toronto as well. Kelly Olenek, RJ Barrett, and Emmanuel Quickly. In fact, by the time I'm recording this, Barrett might actually be playing in the game on Saturday, but I don't know that. So I would say that Barrett and Quickly are almost certain to return. Olenek, maybe, and we'll see how that impacts someone like John Mobo. I've got Mark Williams on this list as well, who yeah, we, we just don't know. It sounds like he's getting pretty close, and I, I would say that a return towards the middle to end of next week seems likely, but it is Mark Williams. So I don't know. And then Jaron Jackson, no, no word on him yet um, for Saturday. So if he doesn't play Saturday, then there is some uncertainty about whether he plays next week, but I'm, I'm very confident, fairly yeah, I'm fairly confident that we're going to see Jaron out there for games in week two. So now let's take a look at weekly leagues. So if you change your lineup once a week, let's pay attention to guys that I think if they're available sitting on your waiver wire, you can go in, have a look, add them, and you'd probably start them in most standard formats. 
in these sort of leagues, you want to be looking at volume. You want to be looking at who's getting more games because four is going to be better than three and better than two in a lot of cases when guys are relatively similar. And these guys are all over 50% available over on Yahoo. So you can go and have a look and see if they're there and add them and start them. Jeremy Sohan, Dennis Schroeder, Malik Monk, Scoot Henderson, Wendell Carter Jr. and Karis LeVert. There's six names that really pop off to me as guys that might be sitting there and you can get the four games out of them. And I think you'll probably slide them into your starting lineup unless your team is awesome, which it might be. These next six players are guys that if they're sitting on your roster, like you can consider drops of some of these guys, but if they're there, you would probably consider a sit for these guys and not including those uncertain injury guys we talked about earlier. And a lot of them are warriors. Brandon Pajemski, John Kaminga, Trace Jackson Davis. Only three games. We don't know what the minutes are. I've got... I don't really have too much of a problem if you want to drop Pajemski. I think that you hold Kaminga, and I think that Jackson Davis is fine to have as well. But for this week, with the level of uncertainty they have, you know, with only three games, you wouldn't feel confident about doing any of that stuff. I think three games for Bobby Portis makes him hard to start. I think three games of Nas Reed. Now, that one's a borderline one, but there are so many teams that play four games that if Nas gets a game where he plays 22 minutes and has nine and five then that's not really going to be worth it. He doesn't have the four-game buffer. And the same goes for Caruso. Like, if he has one of those games that we saw in game one, well, you know what? Then there's no use in starting him in a three-game week. Now, we'll get more of an idea on Caruso across the Saturday-Sunday combination for the Thunder and how they use him. But I'd be really... And in a points league, I don't think you hold on to Caruso, honestly. But in a category league, I would. But I'd be more likely to sit him for this week coming up. And then we like to do this when there is a team that plays two games. What do we do with Tyrese Maxey. I think that you start him. But honestly, the way that he projects out for this week, he sits at around 130th best value, which in a 12-team league is probably not startable. But if there are multiple injuries, which there will be, then that does push him up a little bit. So to me, he is a fringe start, even though it's been a really rough start for him in terms of efficiency. I think you do start Tyrese Maxey even with the two games, but he's very borderline. And honestly, if we knew that Paul George and Joel Embiid were playing, I think Maxey would become a sit with them being the only team with two games and like 20 plus teams playing four games for the week. And that is the week two preview across the fantasy basketball landscape. Leave your comments down below and thumb up and subscribe and all that sort of stuff. Guys, we are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.